Today's Wednesday, June 23rd, 2021. My name is Alex. I am yours truly, your intern with Incorporating Associates. This is another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. And the title for this one is In the Eyes of the Beholder. Yeah, I know. That's not how the song goes. Whatever the fuck Sarah McLachlan said. It's in the arms of an angel, but the title, that's what the title of this episode is. In the eyes of the beholder. Why? Because uh, that's where beauty lies. Beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. It's whoever is doing the the evaluation, the uh, assessing, the appreciation, whoever is consciously putting forth that effort, um, they can work. They can work at making even hell look like heaven. They can make, <laughs> they can make um, lead look like gold. At least in their eyes. And shit, what do you know? Lead is about... (laughs) Lead lead is about... Lead is worth about as much as gold is these days. Um, Yeah, I mean, if you aren't stacking it and stacking it deep, uh, you're in for some rough times ahead because they're trying to do away with lead. They're trying to do away with uh, gasoline. They're trying to do away with diesel. It's gonna be everything electric, everything electric. Except they probably they probably won't even uh, allow ray guns, rail guns, rail guns on the market. You're gonna to have to go all all gray market. You're gonna to have to source your lead on the gray market. Get it uh, get it from some maybe from some intra national sovereigns, if you will. And very few of those exist on, uh, you know, on reserved areas. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what the fuck happens. Um, in the eyes of the beholder, essentially, um, the message there is that tailoring, tailoring a project, tailoring an initiative in the eyes of the beholder who has the power who has the power and that's only to get an affirmative response a positive response a positive reception have it be received well because you also want to be careful that the authority isn't conditional you see if you are beholden to somebody else and I myself have to uh, do this check every now and then. I have to uh, check in on on folks and be sure that they are not beholden to somebody else. It doesn't even have to be formal. It can be informal. I mean, growing up, we've uh, made decisions that have compromised our uh, our independence, have compromised our our freedom, our, our liberties have curtailed our autonomy in some way, be it affiliating ourselves with uh, other organizations. And some of these organizations want their pound of flesh, want their dues paid, want those dues kicked up before anything else. They will necessarily put the organization before the family, before anything else. Before you take your first breath in the morning, you think not. Unfortunately, you, you don't thank God, right? But you thank the organization for having let you live, for having let you breathe. I mean, there are some, some, um, I guess, cultish, for lack of a better concept, cultish-like societies out there in which you would do that. So if you're affiliated with some kind of gang, mafia or cartel, these folks you might be beholden to and is it in my best interest to shake your fucking hand and get caught in the same picture frame 
doing so? No, because then that compromises me. And I can't be beholden to anybody else. So, you want to vet your associates. You want to be sure that the associates you meet are uh, are clean. I mean, they could be dirty. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't have the connections. They wouldn't have the know-how. They wouldn't have the... Uh, capabilities it is that you're looking for in an associate that you are incorporating but you do want to be sure that they are not beholden to someone else to the extent that you have to look pretty for them or you have to look pretty to their superiors to those that they are beholden to because if you have to put off some, some aura of beauty, some aura of satisfaction to their beholders, my friend, <laughs> you are in for a fucking wake-up call. You're in for some heavy, heavy realizations. A type of reality check that is hard to escape. It's hard to escape. I mean, you, you can't escape. Anybody can get away with murder. But, uh, successfully? <laughs> I mean, I mean, successfully? And without, uh, without blowback or additional repercussions? That's a feat. That's quite the feat. So you want to check who, if any, Body or anything you are beholden to as well as your associates and again your associates could be anybody it's just folks that you are reaching across the aisle to shake hands with you want to put yourself on on the same level with everybody you meet yes even those even those some individuals might be beholden to i.e. the beholders at the end of the day, they're fucking nobodies. Like us. They're nobodies. Just like we are nobodies. And I guess you could say, quote unquote, nobody can get away with murder. And uh, um, yeah, any, anybody can be a nobody. Anyone can be a nobody. In the eye of the beholder. It requires a uh, mutual sense of respect. It requires the kind of diplomacy, if you can. And, and that's not to say that if someone is beholden to someone else, that uh, there can't be some ties created or some connections made. It just requires additional work. Additional diplomatic work. That's what professionalism is. It's never ending. And it's always developmental. In the sense that a diplomat is never really off the clock. Because a diplomat represents a higher power. A diplomat necessarily is working. Always. For whoever it is they're representing. Be it their sovereign be it their principality be it themselves be it their own values just diplomatic work and that never ends so you must be wary you have to be cautious you have to take precautions you have to take assessment of yourself and your associates as well as those beholders because the shit's deep even beholders can be beholden to something else or someone else damn for on Wednesday we had to take a deep quickly huh I'm only 10 minutes into this bitch I'm only 10 minutes into this bitch if you haven't yet 
Uh, pass this podcast along to your friends. Tell them that, hey, it's up and coming. And if you haven't heard of Corporate Cowboys yet, you are missing out. If you, <laughs> you haven't heard of the Corporate Cowboys yet, you're fucking missing out. And if they ask, what kind of uh, what, what kind of podcast is that? You can tell them it's a uh, it's a it's a business motivation podcast, I guess. It's also a satire podcast. Some uh, some aspects of comedy, even though it's mostly serious, it's mostly business. And in those moments where I'm I'm debating or arguing or continuing an argument from earlier in the day, it'll be me just riffing. Those uh, shower thoughts that we all have, like, oh, I could have made a better argument there, or I could have used, you know, the, the knife here, or, you know, <laughs> I could have got away doing this and not have to do that other thing. But it's only uh, it technically, technically be me riffing. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that, I suppose. New age professionalism. New, n- modern, postmodern professional? I don't know. That sounds pretty, sounds pretty dystopic. But at the same time, it gives you a sense of hope, doesn't it? Because postmodernism is utter shit. But a professional who continues to be a professional in postmodern uh, earth... On in the postmodern world, in the postmodern era, that means that they're still developing themselves and still adhering to uh, values of diplomacy, values of uh, the principles of professionalism. And I am, I am, as I believe we all should be, should be uh, pursuing consummate professionalism otherwise we aren't shit yeah Tupac said it best we ain't shit we might as well be dead our damn selves (laughs) because because uh, if we aren't working for ourselves we're beholden to something else if we aren't working on developing and bettering ourselves So that we can help create something better. Then we're beholden to something entirely different. We're beholden to the opposite. And I don't like putting it in terms of good and evil. Really it's just principalities. It's it's just principalities. It's It's a higher power. Some folks can see. Some folks cannot. Say when folks say, oh, I work for money. I'm working for the money. You think it's whoever pays them? It might be. I'd like to think that when I say I'm working for the money, I'm working for money. As if money were the entity. As if money were that higher power. What's good for money? Or what isn't? And I'm not always looking to multiply it might be looking to invest it. This is that still some folks treat money as the end all, be all, get all. So they'll rob, cheat, steal for it. Me? Nah. Nah. I mean, I want everybody to have a piece of it. Shit, I'll kill for free. <laughs> If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the podcast on Patreon. Um, you could send it, send in donations if you'd like. Keep the operation nonprofit. There's a Cash App, there's a Venmo, and a PayPal.me as well. Um, what else? Anywhere, I guess, podcasts are listened to or heard, you'll, you'll find a Corporate Cowboys podcast. 
some new things in the work this summer. Summer's going to be a hot one, and it just started. So take care of yourselves. Stay cool. Drink plenty of water. We'll catch you on the flip side.